Super Thursday! Woo! And it's time for a little bit of the wench. Says on the wench. That's right. Um, if you've ever been on the internet and in, in the craft beer land, then you know who the beer wench is. Yeah. If Ashley, you if you drank a beer, you probably know who the beer wench is. <laughs> yeah, she's she's a social media maven. Yeah. Yep. And Ash, Ashley. Actually, she's always R been R that out oh, Rodston. Yeah. Yeah. She's always been like really good at the like social media stuff. Like yeah. that's how I know her. I've known her for right. four years now. As long as I've known Newbury Thursday. Yeah. So we met at the San Diego Beer Week in 2009, and my life changed for the better. Um, sometimes. <laughs> Full disclosure, Ashley is my internet wife. So, um, <laughs> wow. That's how, that's how it was, like, saw each other and then, no, 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 whatever. Mm, not really. Beer. Steve, Steve, can't, <laughs> Steve can't run very fast. Yeah. It's not a fat joke. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> you were the one there. <laughs> But uh, anyways, uh, but we should say this is from Bison Brewing Company. Yeah, this is, um, uh, Ashley's, Daniel's like, um, hello guys, uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ashley's a uh, Ashley's gainful employer. Um, it's a uh, who changed saison. her life? Yeah, it's a saison, uh, which I'm always down for, and um, it's brewed with uh, hibiscus, lemongrass, and rose. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Cheers to Ashley and to Bison Yay. to Dan. Mm. All right, this is an exciting. It smells moment. good. The aroma's not um, like you know how we open some of these and pour them, and it's like the whole room blossoms. Yeah, it's a little bit, bit more, more subtle. It's more subtle, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really expect it. Ex, expank, ex, expect this to <laughs> I be. I expank all the time. <laughs> I didn't really expect it to be. I have cloths for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, John, what were you saying? I didn't really expect it to have like this big Saison yeah, yeah. nose for some reason. I... But it's definitely got that, it, it does have a little bit of like earthiness to it, but yeah, it has a like really a, nice like floral. That, 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 I think the hibiscus actually pops quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It's like a, like, a, well, like a soft, like really mellow, perfumey. Right. Dare I say Whoa, it smells girly? Like, <laughs> girly? <laughs> That's offensive to women. Somehow. The uh, rose hips and the hibiscus and the lemongrass are all going to be more flavor components. There's no rose be... hips. It's rose, rose, rose petals. petals. Yeah. I'm so used to rose hips. But all of those are going to be flavor components as opposed to actual aroma components. No, it's really, it's really going to be both. both. It, it kind of yeah. depends. Um, because I, I assume these went in at the Whirlpool. I'm not sure. But so with that... It's going to be hot, and so some of the aromatics are going to um, be blown off just um, because it's warm. And then during fermentation, a lot of that's going to get blown off too. And so it's going to have a little bit more flavor. It also depends on you know how much you use and a lot of different factors. So yes and no. One of the things that's always really impressed me about Dan and the way he brews is um, he doesn't consider his beers to be... Uh, what's the word? Handicapped because they're organic. Oh yeah, it's organic too. Yeah, yeah, that's, right. yeah, that is one thing that we haven't pointed out. And I remember, um, like three or four years ago, Brad, we were talking, we were talking to Dan at GABF, and Brad was like, "Don't do you ever want to see them have an organic category?" And he's like, "No, because I'm going to win in the categories that my beers are brewed for." Because so it's like he he doesn't look at his beers and say, "Well, it's pretty good for being organic." Right. Yeah, that's it's true. It's um, pretty good for being an amazing saison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like he doesn't he doesn't see that as like, oh, I can go here, I can go this far because it's organic. He's like, no, I can be just as good as any other beer and keep all my ingredients organic. Yeah, and I, th I think that is especially the case now because for a long time, in, it, in order to be certified organic, a certain percentage of your ingredients have to be organic. And so one thing that breweries will do at times is they'll use all organic malt, which is pretty easy to come by, but they won't use organic hops because the hops are such a small part of the actual weight of ingredients. Um, and there's a big demand for hops as it is. But yeah, hops, hops are hard to It should be noted that Bison has never <laughs> Yeah, that, that. that's, yeah. That, that, and that's the point, is like, I think especially now, because they're, the demand for organic hops has grown, there's a lot more variety. Like they just put out a uh, hop kermit, yeah. um, which had a variety of Simcoe that I actually wasn't familiar with. And um, I, I think- And so it, I think it's cool, because especially now, it's become a lot easier, but it's cool that Dan has like, you know, done that from the beginning. Well, and I believe you know? their law changed on that a year or two ago, and now really? it has to be completely organic if they want the organic 
thing on there because I remember having a conversation with Ashley about that and asking her like, oh, well, how's that going to affect? She's like, it doesn't because we are anyway. We already comply with that before it was actually a thing. Right on. So yeah. I don't know if that's <clears throat> gone into gone into play now already or if it's going into play, but I'm pretty sure that they've altered that. And, mm. Anyway. Think, but anyways, think, the point that I was trying to make is, um, especially now that um, there are so many more hops that are available, I think it's just really cool. I'm really excited to see what Dan has coming out. Like I said, Hop Kermit, that's another one to check out. Yes. Right. Yeah. I was just kidding. I think it's the hibiscus that is, that's what I'm getting. I don't know what hibiscus really smells like, and smells I can't describe cool. the smell, and it's floral, and that's got to be what there's, it is. Yeah, there, there's, but there, it's, it, I think one thing is there's like a spice, there's like a... a I was going to say a, that too. There's like a black pepper carrot. Or like, yeah, that's so like funny, white, I was so going to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really slight, like in mm. the back end. And I get, yeah, like, yeah, I get know, a lot more. On the, I get a lot more on the the retro nasal, if you will. Yeah, it's a really, mm. really subtle. It's yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's really nice though. It's it's really great. Fun fact: I always uh, confuse hibiscus for jicama. That they are not the same at all. Not even a little bit. Yeah, they are yeah. very, very. Different. But whenever anybody says uh, has hibiscus to me, I'm thinking jicama in my head. Well, that's why you don't run that's master like pairings. Second Damn second straight. Second yeah. Too. Yeah, so yeah. let's just go off to Master Pairings and see what he'd pair with Hikama. Yeah. Or not. What? <laughs> or not. <laughs> what would you pair with Hikama? Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairings. I'm your host, Bill Sysak. I have Steven Johnson, of course, from New Brew Thursday. I've heard of that show. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Yeah, it's a little goofy for my taste. They need to plan better. Yeah. Anyways, we're at Calm Before the Storm, shooting another uh, episode here at Stone Brewing World Bistro and Gardens in Escondido. Um, great event that we do every year, uh, Super Bowl Sunday, early in the morning. Uh, it's a ticket event, so you can get a bunch of amazing beers and a bunch of amazing food. Uh, you know. I created this event, as I have a lot of the events here, mm -hmm. but I created this event specifically because Greg, uh, our founder, told me that I needed to come to uh, Winter Storm on Super Bowl Sunday starting at 11 o'clock. Right. I was living at Orange in the time, so I was commuting, and I was like, well, I've had a Super Bowl party for 25 years, Greg. How am I supposed to get back and do that? So he let me create this ticket event from 8.30 to 11 so that I could be back home and ready for my Super Bowl party. Now, luckily, I live a few miles from the brewery, so it's much easier. And you're but not having a still, Super Bowl party this year. This is still my favorite event. <laughs> yes. um, so we're here Let's at the event. Beautiful in. weather. It's a perfect February day. Uh, you're rubbing your hands like it's cold, but it's really not cold. No, I'm rubbing my hands because I'm like excited to drink this okay. beer. So we have a ver another very special beer that we're doing. Um, this beer is Matt's Burning Rosed Imperial Cherrywood Smoke Saison. It's a ten and a half percent saison. Uh, Rosed's is the family, the plant family that cherrywood comes from. Mm -hmm. So that's why we get a little fancy there. Um, and then it's got the cherrywood smoked malt, so it adds a lot of complexity, big in alcohol. This beer goes to three different charities, one of them being a uh, charity for Africa. Mm -hmm. um, Matt Cartwright was one of our brewers. He had a terrible accident here last year and lost his life, unfortunately. It has been a very tough time for the Stone family, but this is one of the beers that he had come up with before. So as a tribute, we wanted to brew this beer and send it out nationally uh, to get the word out and also to you know support his charities which right he would have had. Um, so even though it's a somber moment, if you get this beer, I want you to celebrate Matt. He was a great guy. We have information about him on our website. But he would like us to enjoy this now. So this is a big beer. Doesn't remind me a lot of a saison because it's so high in alcohol. Mm -hmm. but And it's very young, so it's got some good fusel notes. But it does remind me of a, a Belgian Golden Strong Ale. Something like a Scaldis, right? You know, something along that lines, uh, or even a um, uh, the Mad Bitch from the Dole. Okay, I don't think uh, I've had that one. Uh, you have. It's just called has a different name, which I haven't okay. told you yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Dul secret. Teve. Dul Teve. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dul okay, okay. So Dul Teve, but it's considered a song, but it's also big. So enough of that. Let's cheers. Cheers, cheers to Matt. Love you, Matt. <laughs> Smokiness, sweetness, little fusel alcohol notes. Mm -hmm. But the, the fusel is so, like, it's so complimentary and not overwhelming. It is. 
it's one of those good things where with the with the smokiness right off the bat, mm -hmm. I wish there were more big smoky beers. Brewers, take note. I mean, there's a lot of great smoked beers, but I wish there were big like 11, 10, 12% smoked beers. It'd be amazing. John, our producer, who's also uh, on New Brew Thursday and uh, a home brewer, I can see his mind going, nee, 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 nee. Yeah, because yeah, the last time I was at a beer fest, I kept thinking, where are all the big beers? <laughs> Not big beers. Yes. Big beers with smoke. This beer's got a wonderful mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. Huge pear and apricot and nectarine notes. Just covers your whole palate. It's almost weird. It's kind of like you get this big fruity balance around the ba around your tongue, and then at the top of your palate, you're picking up the smokiness. Mm -hmm. Almost like smoke rises kind of thing. It's right. kind of crazy. It's almost it's, like the top of your mouth kind of collects that. It's it's delicious. I mean, I love this beer. I, I've got my case. I'm laying it down. I mean, this is going to be an amazing beer for years to come. With it, once again, we have some of Tony Martin, our talented pastry chef's uh, pastries. Um, I know pumpkin bread is one of your favorites, Stephen, so uh, I thought we'd get some pumpkin bread. Please help yeah. yourself. Subtle, not yeah. over the top. Nice spicing, plays really well. It should be a match made in heaven with this beer. Let's find out. Oh, yeah. It really brings up a little bit more of that, the malty, like almost caramel flavors. I'm getting some pineapple. It's almost like there are pieces of pineapple in here yeah. or other other fruit. Not necessarily citrus, but tropical. Or you can also go with the pear and nectarine notes mm -hmm. that are in there. But And it, it drops the smokiness a bit. Oh, totally. My biggest, my only, my only real problem with pumpkin things is that it's always too much. Right. And these are really, like you said, they're very subtle. It's, it's not like overly sweet. It's not overly like spicy. It's just very nice, subtle hints of pump, pumpkin in there and very tasty bread. I don't know the exact percent. I'm going to go out and say 90%. Probably 90% of most pumpkin products, even pumpkin beers, but pies for sure and cake, thin cakes and things, they use the, the, the canned pumpkin puree. Right. It's already got all the spices. It's big and tense. Need preservatives. Obviously, he's not doing that with this. We don't do that at Stone. So it, it's lighter. It's got more of the true pumpkin flavor. Does Stone even have a can opener? I do, but don't tell him. But, um, <laughs> I keep it in my desk drawer, out of sight. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's amazing. Well, a really good thing is food used to be, um, you know, we everything was artisanal. And then we started getting into national brands in the 30s, 40s, 50s. Everything became space age this, space age that. Right. So in the 50s, in a grocery store, because I'm, I'm doing some talks at SDSU on this, I found that 85% of the products in grocery stores in the 50s started to become canned food. Hmm. Everything. That's how like spam was invented and right. Vienna sausages. Well, that's because they thought they were going to have to take it all down to a bunker for a, a <laughs> right. nuclear war. But it seemed like it was really easy for them to do it, so they did it. Now, 15% of most grocery stores is canned food, which is amazing. So that's a good start. This was delicious and tasty. Do you like pumpkin bread now? Um, I like this pumpkin bread. Fair enough. That's a good point. <laughs> so, all right. Um, what do you think of this beer? I think this beer is amazing. I've had this before, and I, I'm really excited about this beer being out. And um, It is just a wonderful tribute to, to Matt and everything that he did for Stone. And um, It's nice to see the Stone family come together like that, even right. though it's some, over something as tragic as that. So. Of course. Um, but, yeah, so it's a fantastic beer and well worth the effort to get. Go out and find yourself some... Uh, Matt's Burning Roses Cherrywood Imperial Smoke Saison. You owe it to yourself. Yes. You owe it to us. Me. I'm telling you. Get it. Anyways, thanks for watching another Master Pairing, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So we're back from Master Pairings. Once and again. Once again. Was it delicious in your mouth? In your mouth, bitches. Okay, so uh, we have nothing going on and nothing to do. So... We are grateful that you've joined us for yet another week. Stay safe and true. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Um, Bison, thanks for the beer. Yeah. yeah um, that is a disclaimer, I guess. We yeah, were this provided was, this, this was beer. This was provided to us uh, from Bison, and um, this beer is delicious. And um, I think it definitely stands out. I mean, because they, they brew kind of, you know, the standard line of beers. They have the chocolate stout. Mm. Um, they have an IPA. Uh, they they have the, the uh, hop cuvee, which is like a different... They, they, whatever hops they can put in there, I think that's how it works. That's yeah. kind of how that beer turns out, yeah, yeah. so it kind of changes. Um, but this one stands out, I think, from the rest of their beers, which is 
Uh, similar to Ashley in the world. She does yeah. stand out, that's for sure. I think the other disclaimer I need to put out is that I have slept with both Dan and Ashley, so. Sexy. Weird. Not in a sexual way, but we've shared a bed. Well, I thought of sex. Well, that, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what you were, you were, and, and you were insinuating. Yeah. And leather we were, couches. You were insinuating. And leather couches and cocoa butter. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was an incident with uh, pantyhose being pulled over my head. It was a very confusing time for me. On that note, stay safe and drink beer. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.